Welcome back to Let's Play DDA Permadeath. For those of you uh, new to the sequence of videos, I started playing this guy at level 1 under Permadeath rules, and I'm hoping to well, play him as far as I can go, hopefully all the way to level 20, but we will see. The strong smell of sewage permeates the air around you. You hear human voices up ahead. So I, uh, I started this guy at level 1, and uh, he just took level 5, in fact, before this video. I am playing under permadeath rules, so essentially if I die and there's no one in the group to raise me, then the character's dead and has to leave the guild and the videos end. Which is what happened to my previous permadeath guy, and you can see the videos of that character also on my YouTube account. That's a separate a playlist. Stench comes from the other side of the it's a separate playlist from this one. Hey, named us here. So, if you're interested in more detail in the rules, I will post a link to my guild's website. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, Extreme Explorers Guild on Sarlona, and I'm following their rules. Uh, and I've also talked through them in previous videos. If you look at the Baudry Cartamon chain videos that I played on this guy, a little further back in the uh, same playlist, you will see me talk about the rules a little more. But essentially, apart from the p basic permadeath rule of uh, if I die, then the characters are all over. Apart from that, there's uh, equipment restrictions, so I can't group with uh, characters outside the guild, so in any group of permadeath characters. And, uh, and I can't accept equipment from people outside the guild, except by purchase on the auction house. I'm uh, soloing this guy and I'm not really buying anything on the auction house, so uh, I'm basically working with just pound equipment at the moment. And stuff that you can buy, um, uh, consumables from uh, public vendors. I did go into the waterworks on the... Uh, in the, the end of the previous video on this guy to get level 5, but I haven't uh, got any of the rares before this video. So I'm taking a look for them here. The, uh, the real action starts in a moment when I go into the, uh, the Lost Seekers quest chain. Alright, on to the quest. And as I always do these days, I will be doing uh, the waterworks. Hopefully I'll leave the whole way through, although we will see how well that goes in part 3. I'd forgotten to cast Master's Touch. It didn't really matter outside, but in here, with um, the enemy scaled for Elite, it will matter. 
All right. I've got no way of disabling the traps here. So I'm going to have to try and pull someone from in the distance. And of course, that might be tricky. I should have brought a frag weapon in. I guess I could sacrifice my skeleton to the trap. That would be rather annoying, though. Damn, he's just out of range of my uh, Nyaks. Not that my Nyaks would necessarily have been that helpful. Alright, persuaded my skeleton to uh, take the hit for me there. And I think this is a once only trap. Yep, I think we're good. many pugs have uh, people die in these first couple of traps. It's one of the things that distinguishes permadeath players that the uh, players are much more careful. So hopefully I'm not going to die here because that would be embarrassing. So the Waterworks is something of a permanent classic. It's one of the uh, places we always bring new guildies quite early on. Um, partly because it's just a lot of XP at low levels, so it's one that everybody wants to do. But also, there's just enough danger in here to make life interesting. The traps obviously add an element of danger, since uh, uh, traps on Elite are always seriously dangerous. You have to be careful with the traps in here. But also there's always danger from uh, the Cobalt Shaman. The lightning bolts are obviously a serious problem. <laughs> That's it, part one is usually not a serious problem.
Okay, no chest in here, so the key must be in the other room. Plus there are other you know, random fights in the quests that are fairly difficult, and this next one is one of them. The, uh, the name spider, if it's in this room, is always dangerous. It's not here, okay. Of co curse removal, always handy. Okay, this will be the key. I can't afford to buy potions at this point, but anything you can get free is always good. Um, I'm really saving up for for a um, for a medium collectibles bag. Uh, since my inventory is starting to get overrun with collectibles. Sorry, just breaking every crate in here since every bit of XP matters. Yeah, the waterworks is a lot of XP, so I want to get all the benefit from it I can. I always jump over those jets even once they've stopped firing, so I'm never quite sure what it is that uh, makes them stop firing. Named here either. Yeah, this quest is reasonably easy. The uh, real danger starts in part two, where things get scary. So I should talk about what I've done on this guy since last time. Obviously, I leveled up to level five. I took mental toughness as my feat. Actually, I want to go this way, don't I? taking Maximize at level 6, but I figured I didn't really need Maximize quite yet. Since I'm not using a lot of damage spells yet. Wizards are a bit too slow at casting spells and don't have the spell points for using damage spells regularly. At these levels at least. So I'm happy enough to be uh, swinging a big sword here. Yeah, the build that I'm following on this guy. Loud yipping voice behind the door. The, the build here is pure wizard pal master. I've gone dwarven for extra constitution, and I have uh, points in strength, so I'm a reasonably effective melee character um, for the lower middle levels.
against these guys at least I'm doing reasonable melee damage. I was really struggling in catacombs against the undead, but no problem against the kobolds. Alright, so there is a chest behind there, but I can't disable the trap and I won't run through traps on elites even with uh, protection. Because that trap will do a lot of damage. Okay, so other changes since last time. I took protection from energy and displacement as my two level 3 spells for leveling up. And I also had scrolls of heroism and Halt Undead available, so I used those. I need to renew my buffs. I've dropped the Arcane Augmentation Cloak that I was wearing levels 1 through 4. Uh, the, uh, the Arcane Augmentation Cloak is awesome at low levels. At level 3, for instance, it's basically a one-third increase in spell damage. But uh, most of the level 1 spells max out damage at level 5, so it no longer boosts damage. Okay, got to go careful here, the wolves are very nasty. And my web is not good enough to catch them. That's uh, helpful. Alright, any more? Yeah, one more wolf. That is a uh, fight that people often underestimate. I've seen a few permanent players uh, get killed uh, underestimating that wolf pack there. Plus the uh, always more amusing one where people underestimate it and then end up running away, running in circles around the level, kiting wolves around behind them. That's always entertaining. Another more dangerous fight coming up here. Stepped out at the wrong moment there. Nearly into the path of the lightning bolt. And the gate. That was bad timing. Alright, I think all the shaman are down. This room is always quite dangerous because of uh, shaman throwing lightning bolts from the back. But I think I am past the worst now. Yeah, I don't see any other shaman. Alright, let's go undead and get some healing done here.
and I will shrine while I've got the uh, opportunity. changes since last time. I had a plus three con belt in the bank that I can now wear, so I'm wearing that. Uh, I swapped out the Arcane Augmentation Cloak as I mentioned, and I had some some speed free boots in the bank as well, which I have now switched on. And a wizardry free ring to boost my spell points for buffing. So that's all a big improvement. that have not improved since level 5 are my melee weapon. I'm still using a basic plus one greatsword, since I just haven't found anything better than that so far. Which uh, kind of sucks since I could use a good melee weapon. This guy isn't isn't a you know, melee character, so his damage, his damage is not awesome anyway. And his to hit's not awesome either. So a, uh, a better melee weapon would be really helpful. Time for the spiders. This will be a tougher fight than the rest of the level, so I'll get that uh, for a healing game. bad. I could certainly use a better suit here or a better melee weapon. Still, I'm liking having heroism now. It puts my saves up nice and uh, I guess it boosts my to hit as well which is uh, very good to have on this uh, non-melee guy that's meleeing a lot. Okay, conquest and ransack. Alright, sorry for the uh, recording interruption, I had to take a break there.
The strong smell of sewage permeates the air around you. So I need to go through the explorer area again. You hear human voices up ahead. The inhabitants killed already. It's rather surprising I made it to uh, 50 there. I was killing so many on these uh, runs through here. Not doing so well with rares though. Alright, back to serious business. much more dangerous. There are far more cabled casters in part 2 and uh, also the nasty spike trap in this room which uh, always kills a few permit efforts. People forget that the trap is there. Alright, no named shaman here I think. <laughs> If the uh, named shaman had been there, I would not have played that so aggressively. But with a single basic cobalt shaman, that's no problem. That's annoying. Yep, that will do nicely. I just wanted to find enough of the uh, spikes there that I could um, navigate my way through here. Because one hit is almost certainly enough to kill me here. Skeleton, they're hanging around. Wow, I got some bad damage rolls against that shaman. Had to chase him around for a while. 
Alright, so I'm gonna go to the non prison side first, I think. And I, we like to deal with the ambush behind here before doing anything else. Oh, I did like the shaman being so close to the spikes back there. If he backs up into the spikes, then it'll be a real pain to kill him. That's better. So as you can tell, my strategy for playing permadeath is pretty cautious. I have a very dungeon, dungeon crawling playing style. And I'm thinking all the time about how to minimize the uh, risk of each fight. Deliberately uh, sticking to the shaman during that fight there, and staying facing his direction as much as I could before I um, saw him get activated. All right, now we get to an interesting and dangerous fight. There are lots of Kobold casters here. I'm going to uh, park my Skeleton Knight back here so he doesn't charge into the room. Usual permadev tactics here are to avoid going inside the room since the uh, there's a lot of casters in there shooting lightning bolts. So you want the ability you to withdraw. You notice some deep scratches along the wall that crudely spell out the word blood letter. And going inside the room, they can pull the lever and trap you inside, which is always a bad idea. Alright, I did pretty badly at timing um, stepping out in this run. I've been stepping out into lightning bolts rather a lot. Just picking another shaman out of the crowd here. Whoa, and that's the big boss. Ah, nice. That must have been a crit. Alright, that's most of the danger gone now. was uh, done fairly safely in the end. You will see me doing a lot of dodging lightning bolts from the Cobalt Shaman in this run. And that's something of a, uh, 
a key permadeath skill. Nobody uh, gets very far in permadeath if they can't uh, dodge the lightning bolts from the shaman. Extreme Explorers does allow you to play um, normal if you like, where the shaman are not really dangerous, but um, basically um, we don't, uh, don't tend to do the harbour on much other than elite. There's, uh, there's not really any need to, and uh, if people are going to struggle with the uh, shaman in the harbour they might as well die early and find out early, rather than getting to level 5 when um, there's really a way of avoiding the difficulty. Yeah, the harbour of normal is very easy indeed. But uh, Elite is a proper challenge and it's a good uh, test of whether you're going to be able to uh, handle permadeath or not. Alright, that's shrine number two available. Human voices begging for help from the other side of the door. So many dwarven axes, and I can't use them. The prisoner thanks you for freeing him and runs off to safety. In fact, that's probably one reason why I'm still struggling with um, finding a decent melee weapon. The uh, lead gen keeps giving me dwarven axes. Maybe I should uh, toggle off the uh, class specific rewards. Alright, more, um, more wolves ahead. As with the previous quest, the wolves are one of the main dangers. Shaman in the back. Two more wolves, another further down the corridor. The, uh, is that the first time I've been tripped? Maybe the second time I've been tripped on this character. My AC is still pretty good for my level. Um, using a shield spell, of course. This 
appears to and, be uh, clear. As usual, here, deliberately setting up the ambush before uh, going for the next door. Reflex save is good on this guy. I have uh, insightful reflexes. Hey, maybe I could open the door. Yeah, with insightful reflex save, um, reflexes, I've got a good reflex save, so I can easily make uh, make my reflex saves most of the time, which makes the lightning bolts a lot less. Uh, well, it makes them not less dangerous. And that I always have to consider rolling a uh, rolling a bad uh, roll on my reflex save. Wow, Omni spell stones! I don't think I've ever seen those before. Interesting. But I will probably sell those since they uh, are probably more valuable to me um, as money. To me. Whoa. I find that inventory slots are too precious to uh, afford to carry around special components like that. Since I would always carry the correct spell components as well, I wouldn't bother carrying two sets of components for the same spell. So, standard permadeath tactics in this room. This is a tough room. It's uh, actually a really good fight, this room. Standard permadeath tactics are to uh, stay out of the... Um, stay away from the edge. Because there's a lot of shaman shooting at you when you're on the edge. Ah, damn it, he dodged. He's copying my tactics, he dodged into the undead. Bring him and runs off to see. Well, we've pinned out the uh, charm of the loss at this point. Well, I'm still wary in case one suddenly shows up. There's another one. I 
I've been mostly using the greatsword for maximum damage, but this is actually a decent weapon if I'm casting Nyax a lot. Which I am in here to uh, knock out the shaman a distance. Shaman standing right on top of my cabled warrior there. So apart from my skeleton taking a bit of a battering, that went very smoothly. Just clearing out all of the uh, alcoves here. This quest is uh, quite a lot of XP, so it's well worth getting the uh, getting all the bonuses for it. Yeah, should be a good six thousand XP by the time I'm done. Right, that's almost all of the uh, serious action done here. Just the uh, optional zombies to do. Mm, actually, I guess I should uh, shrine, really. Oh, maybe I'll be okay. I still have my uh, necklace, of course. <laughs> I need enough spell points to uh, drop a web or two. I remember there being so many breakables under here. Notice a wooden hatch beneath the surface of the water. Okay. Your spine tingles as you hear the low moans of the undead. Thank you. 
with the uh, with the web and the self healing. That's no problem. Unless I have lots of hit points, of course. It's easy to uh, get caught out on that fight if you don't have a lot of hit points and your defences are low. Zombies generally do a surprisingly high amount of damage to uh, to compensate for their being really slow, of course. Okay, conquest and ransack. just to pick my way past the spike traps. After thanking you once more, Arlos dashes off towards the surface and safety. All right. I will quickly check these two rares and then I will recall and sell repair before doing the other two parts. I am not doing well on rares in here. I will quickly check the one under the water as well. And he's not here either. <laughs> 